Well, hello and welcome to Unleash Dogs Without Limits. I'm Carl Metzler, and this week we're talking bird dog field trials and tournament hunting at the United Field Trialers Association Nationals. We headed down to Kentucky to catch up with Randy and Nathan Hilligus from Magic Valley Pointers in New York to get a little insight into the sport. We'll learn what the UFTA is all about and see just what it takes to compete at a high level this week on Unleashed. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. Hi, my name is Randy Hilligus, owner operator of Magic Valley Pointers. I grew up small game hunting with, you know, brother and my dad, and, and we had a little springer we'd take out, you know, and, and that was my, my, my grouse experience. You know, started off beating the brush by ourselves and then we got the Springer involved and it kind of changed the whole game and it was like an eye-opener to <laughs> what it could be and now it's what it should be. <laughs> so, um, and that's how it all started and then it just progressed, you know, and then once I got my own family and our boys were, you know, old enough to start following around in the woods, we, we, we got a set and a pointer and then moved down from there. Hello, my name's Nathan Hilligus. I am a co-owner of Magic Valley Poners out of Lindley, New York. Um, I've been playing uh, tournament hunting with, with my dogs for over 12 years. I've uh, been hunting dogs for over 15 years. The first hunting dog we ever had was a beagle, actually. And we hunted with, with a beagle for a while, and then uh, my family, at the time, we, we got an English setter and an English pointer. Started uh, doing more bird dog hunting, you know, because it was a lot harder to grouse hunt without one. And then we started uh, going towards preserve hunting and starting to go to different avenues. Um, started doing tournament hunting with my father, and then one thing led to another, and I haven't turned back. Yeah, so I, so I had that that setter and a pointer, and then I had gotten another pointer, um, male. I got a puppy, and um, so I had two pointers at at the time and a setter, and I was working at Gander Mountain, and someone had to put up a, a flyer on a bulletin board for this BDC, you know, tournament hunt, which is basically like a chucker challenge you'd see at some of these club trials. And I said, you know, I've seen that on TV. At that point, it had been on ESPN, I think, a couple times, and I thought, I've always wanted to try that. And wow, holy cow, it's not in Iowa, it's here in New York. Uh, we'd done some preserve hunting, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, I could go get my three birds, be done, go home, have a great time, and so we went. We ran one pointer to just experience it, and we both ran the pointer and, and had a great time. Um, had, you know, had a blast, shot our birds, went home, laughed, and then uh, they had a circuit that we didn't know about at the time. It was just one event of, of a circuit, so um, we went back for the next event and then just started to keep going to the event over and over, and then, the dog turned out to be, honestly, a natural. He made us look good, and he was only two years old at the time, so um, he, he had some great success. Um, accidentally, basically, qualified for the national in Iowa, I think it was that year, back in 2010. And uh, so we went there with our little two-year-old pointer and wound up taking second in the amateur division. <laughs> so that after that point, it was absolutely game on. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. It was different. I mean, I, I had preserve hunted before, so I kind of expected, you know, it to be kind of like that, but, but a little different. You know, I was used to them putting, you know, pen raised birds out into a, a certain size field, and you go out with your dog and find your bird and shoot your bird and, you know, go home happy. So it was a little different to go there and, you know, to have. You know, there was you know, a score, a scored structure to it, and 
trying to figure out you know the rules obviously and how the game was played and you know and he talked to the guys that have been doing it for a little bit and they had like little game plans and you know and they tried to give us pointers on what to expect and the community was really helpful and really supportive in, in new members and to grow their sport. Me and my father have always had a competitive tendency for everything we've ever done in, in whether it be sports or anything so when we got to do something with our dogs that we already enjoyed doing and then we added a competitive aspect to it it just it was an, it was a natural thing for us for your active dog not just any dog food will do it takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play that's why we made kinetic performance dog food each kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. In the UFTA, which is the organization that we're running in, for this week at the Nationals. In the tournament hunting, so you have different divisions. Um, you'll have an amateur division, an all-age division, and then you have a doubles division. Doubles is two dogs, two handlers. Um, so in the amateur and in the open all-age division, it's one dog, one handler. Each competitor gets three birds in a field, roughly seven to 10 acres and they have a 15 minute time limit to find those three birds. Dog has to find the birds, point the birds, hold the point for three seconds. The handler must shoot the bird and then the dog must retrieve the bird. Once you retrieve your third bird, then the time stops. A lot of people call these speed trials or speed races. Um, time is a factor in this game. Um, so the faster, the better. There's a, a scorekeeper that walks with you in the field and he just scores the dog. He pointed or he didn't. He held three seconds or he didn't. You know, he retrieved it or he didn't. You know, um, if you have pointers and setters, they, they're not temper. There's, there's no consideration for if his tail is at 12 or, or 11 or two. Um, you just gotta find those birds. You just gotta point those birds and hold this point and retrieve them to you. They're not judged at all. They're, they're scored. And um, that's why I think it's such an attraction to the average guy with an average dog that can come out here and compete um, because they can do that, you know. They don't necessarily have to put 10 hours on the bench to make sure the tail is at, at 12 o'clock, you know I mean? Um, so it's pretty if it is, don't get me wrong. And most of us appreciate that. But at the end of the day, this is a game that we choose to run and, and it's not a consideration. Just understand that you're just hunting your dog you know it's called tournament hunting for a reason yeah there's a little bit of competition to it but you're just hunting your dog so get out there hunt your dog i mean let, let's face it it's not everyone can go on a week-long trip to wherever right and and preserves you know their short windows or you know it takes up time but if you can go out there and be around a large group of guys that all have bird dogs and all have that love and go out there and get your three birds in, in the field win lose or draw miss a bird shoot a bird it doesn't matter you're hunting your dog get out there just hunt your dog and the rest will fall into place have fun with it um and you might be, be surprised what happens actually because that's what happened to me <laughs> The one disadvantage we have for being in New York is that there isn't a very huge following for it in our state. Um, we're trying to improve those numbers. Uh, we, we started hosting our own trials last year to try to draw some interest, and, and we brought in some of the competitors from the Pennsylvania area that we, that, that we currently travel to to compete. But on a regular basis, yes, we have to travel a good, a, a good amount to hit trials. Our closest trial um, outside of our own personal one is almost five hours away. And 
and we hit those quite often throughout the year. I mean, probably at least half a dozen that we try to. But we've traveled as far as Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, Georgia, Alabama. I mean, anything east of the Rockies, really, we, we've, we've pretty much been, been to. I mean, one of the, biz, the biggest examples I can think of is two years ago, um, me and my dad were chasing for the High Point Dog of the Year um, title in the, in the United Field Trial Association, the UFTA. The, the last 10 weeks of the season, I was gone. I mean, from October to the end of December, I was in a different state, away from my family, away from everybody. I had to take time off for of work to chase those dogs because you have to accumulate the points. And I was, uh, I was in Illinois, um, Kentucky, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio. I was at a tournament the day after Christmas. It needed to be done. And if, and if, and if I wouldn't have made that commitment, then we wouldn't have gotten the accomplishments we did get that year. We were able to get first and third in, in the open, open all age dog of the year race and the first place for the doubles that year for the dog of the year title. So with, yes, without putting the time in and, and the commitment, you know, you're not gonna get some of those things. I think it's just the love of the sport of being with my dogs. I mean, even before we did the tournament hunting, we enjoyed just hunting with our dogs. I and mean, whether it be preserve hunting or grouse hunting or pheasant hunting or whatever it was, we just enjoy being with our animals. You know, the bonds that we've created with them, the memories we've created. I mean, I mean, you go through so many dogs in a lifetime and then never one of them is the same. You build different memories with every one. So that, that was always something that kept us like into it because every time we get a new litter of puppies or we bought a new dog to improve our line, you're just making new memories and it's just keeping you drawn into that. Do you have passion? Do you have drive? Of course you do. But do you spend your days doing what makes you happy? If you're not doing what you love, you're wasting your time. Top Tier Canine is not just a dog trainer school, it's a business school. We seek those looking to join the pack. We are driven, we are passionate, and we are strengthened by each successful graduate. Time to work some dogs. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Why don't you head over to BlackRifleCoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Safari Insurance in Cincinnati if auto owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. In every aspect of it, there's only three things a dog really has to do. He's got to come with you, he's got to come to you, and he's got to be able to stand still or sit still. The rest of it, we complicate. <laughs> you know, whether he's got a bird in his mouth, he's coming to you, that's a retrieve. You know, if he's coming with you, he's coming in the direction you want him to come. And if he's going to come to you, that's pretty simple. That's just a recall command. But it's really three basic things. You have to focus really hard on three things, which, you know, and remember, they don't learn it the first time. You know, and, and anytime you think he's got it, put a distraction in there, and all of a sudden he doesn't again, right? So, I mean, um, that's because there wasn't enough repetition with now distractions involved, you know, so um, Yeah, but repetition equals time and people sometimes just lose interest or or they get frustrated You know dog training requires a very calm demeanor Especially when you're very passionate about it and you think the dog sh Should know the expectation and is not performing. It's it's easy to get ramped up and then you twist in the competition piece of it that, you know, obviously elevates it all because that's why we're doing it. So um, that does add another whole piece to it. A lot of it depends on, you know, what we're, 
what we're trying to concentrate on. I mean, training can start for just little stuff or just throwing a tennis ball across the living room floor and having the dog, you know, retrieve that ball back to you. And you know, we do that a lot when they start, you know, bringing up through the puppies and everything. And then even when we're outside, we transition into uh, woeing a dog up or retrieval training, heel training. You know, just basic command, collar, you know, collar commands. And then uh, putting dogs on birds. You know, we spend a lot of time in the field with the dogs and the birds, obviously when we can. This time of year is tough and where we live in New York because of the weather and the snow. So it's a, it's a big deal for us to come down before these trials and try to get our dogs on these birds before we get here. Just give us a little bit of an edge, I guess you could call it. People's biggest downfall is they don't put the time and the commitment into it. You know, dogs, by nature, just in general, the DNA of a, of a canine, they don't, they don't learn much the first time. Second time, dogs learn in repetition. And people lose the interest before the dog does. So, um, but if with enough time, commitment, and focus, yeah, I think, I think anybody can train their animal to be competitive and have a good time in this sport. You go to these, these tournament hunts and, you know, we'll have, I mean, for the nationals, you only have 300 dogs and you don't have competitors and they're all dog friendly and they're there for the same reason. They're an average guy that has a regular job that's out here running his dog and he's doing the same thing you, you are. He's training in his backyard you know and, and, and having a good time so I mean with that said you can learn a lot from just people but I think absolutely there's there's not a lot of magic to it. People complicate it. <sighs> Nutrition is key to performance and, and, and not just because they run like they run, right? They'll run hours. You know, when we're wild, wild bird hunting, they'll run for hours and hours and, and you know, uneven terrain and different weather. And, but just the mental acuity, you know, and the, the ability to stay focused. And, uh, nutrition goes a long way, not just for muscle, and stamina and you know bone, but it, there's a lot of uh, things that people overlook when it comes to that. Having nutrition for my animals is very important. I mean, obviously we do a sport with our dogs. Our sport, our dogs are athletic and they need to perform at a, at a high level. So for me, I'm not gonna give my dog something that I wouldn't wanna give myself if I was trying to be athletic. So if I expect my dogs to perform and be healthy while they're performing, I want them to have the best things in their bodies to help them succeed. You know, Kinetic has always been good for my dogs. I know we've fed many things over the years, obviously in 15 years, and Kinetic's so new to us. So, you know, we've only been you know, dealing with Kinetic now, I think three years now. So, since we've been on that, you know, they just, their, their body mass, everything about them, they just look good, you know, and they react good to it. And as long as they're happy, I'm happy. I have seen a, a tremendous increase in stamina and you know, muscle density and you know, recovery has been nothing I've ever seen until I use Kinetic. Um, but then I think my, the ability of the dogs to stay in tune during a training session um, is better. And my dogs have, have won some big trials in some nasty, nasty conditions um, over, over the years too. Um, Ever since I've been feeding Kinetic, it's even gotten better. Um, so you take good genetics, good DNA, great nu nutrition, and you just, that's the combination for, a, you know, the best animal that it can be. Are you tired of the same old toolbox that doesn't keep your gear organized, clean, or protected? Then you need a cam locker. Our exclusively designed aluminum toolboxes have hefty T-handles, insulated lids, and feature the cam locker system. The toughest aluminum toolbox lock. Proudly manufactured in the USA, cam locker will be the best and last toolbox you will ever own. So keep your tools and gear secure with a cam locker toolbox. The key to security. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in Southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting.
Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our kinetic supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. I'm Jeff Mender with Top Tier Canine, and as part of our training and part of our School for Dog Trainers, we're constantly asked uh, from our clients and from our students and from our affiliates across the country, when's the best time to spay or neuter your dog? Well, if you've ever rescued a dog, or if you remember the old Price is Right, where they would say after every uh, segment of the show, you know, spay or neuter your dog, uh, almost like spay or neuter, neuter your dog continuously, uh, it tends to be in our faces all the time. And if you adopt a dog from a shelter or a rescue, they often require you to spay or neuter that dog immediately. Well, it's not a good idea to spay or neuter your dog before that dog has reached sexual maturity. All right, the, the hormones that are created and then are taken away if you spay or neuter your dog are very important to the growth of that dog from bone density uh, to muscle mass and to growth uh, uh, as a dog to go, get out there and perform its missions. Uh, if, I've, if I'm gonna spay or neuter my dog, I'm gonna wait till about the two year mark. Uh, and then of course, I'm gonna be responsible and I'm not gonna allow my dog when, when he or she is in heat to be out there and could be impregnated by another dog. That's our responsibility, right? So let's not just spay or neuter our dogs, you know, when they're six weeks old, 10 weeks old, 15 weeks old, wait till two years. And in the interim, when the dog has one or two heat cycles, protect it from becoming impregnated. And in the end, we'll have much healthier dogs, much greater bone mass, you know, far fewer late life diseases that involve uh, uh, the pain of hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, all of that is impacted by the lack of hormones created by spaying or neutering your dog. I'm Jeff Mender, come on down to our Academy for Dog Trainers. We teach our students information such as this, as well as how to start and run your own uh, dog training business. I don't think I'd be doing it at the level I'm doing it if I wasn't doing it with my son. I mean, I'd have bird dogs. There's no doubt about that. I'd probably be running him in trials, but I wouldn't have, you know, six of them in a dog box chasing all over the country. You know, um, that's why. That we're doing it like we're doing it now, to be honest, so. One of the biggest things is that I get to do it with my father. I mean, me and my father, or pretty close together in age. He had me young in life, and I kind of grew up with, with as he grew up. So growing up, we did everything together. So we've always had that bond, whether it be this sport or, or other sports. So to me, that's one of the driving reasons. And the other reason is it's just my passion for my animals. I mean, so most of my dogs sleep in my bed. <laughs> Sometimes the missus don't like it, but that's where they sleep. But, uh, <laughs> so part of it's that, you know, just the bond that I know that I can enjoy my time with them and also be competitive and you know a chance to put a title on my dog and you know and, and brag about my dog you know my dog won this and so that, that really is the driving force to keep me coming you know the, the friendships and, and the bonds that I make with my, my family and my friends and my animals. I've been blessed to be honest and, and I've I've encountered a lot of people that have had that same blessing to be honest I've seen a lot of father son combos southern son daughter combos that over the years that have just been connected by their dogs for the love of the dog, to enjoy the dog in the field doing what they're doing, but it brought them together. For some reason, canines just seem to hit you at the heart. You know, they call a man's best friend for a reason. You know, I mean, they're loyal, they'll be there for you. Even, you know, even if you're having a bad day, a dog can seem to put a smile on your face for whatever reason, you know, they, they, they feed off your energy and they, they know how to just be there for you just like a, a member of your family would I mean some people might not feel that way but I feel that way I treat my dogs like they're my children I mean I, I have I have one daughter of my own and 
and uh, she loves the dogs just like we do, and they're a member, they're a member of the family just like anything else. You know, if there's one theme that runs consistently throughout the course of this show, it's that bond that is formed between a handler and a dog. There's something unique about working with a dog, competing with a dog, or even just living with a dog. And it doesn't matter if you're a professional trainer or a regular guy or gal just trying to have some fun with your dog. If you're interested in getting involved with UFTA, visit their website at ufta-online.com. That's all the time we've got left this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time on Unleashed.